Lam Win Viet still needs a little help from his parents to reach the place where his life was forever changed. This is the field where Viet and his best friend Hao Vo stumbled across an old rusted mortar shell. The shell exploded when they tried to pick it up. Viet lost sight in one eye, nearly lost both legs. His friend Vo was killed. Another grim statistic in one of the deadliest legacies of the Vietnam War. This right here is a, a 82 millimeter mortar and this could do a, a lot of damage. UXO, they call it, a no-nonsense military designation for unexploded ordnance. Mortars, grenades, artillery shells still being found in fields, forests, on roads, in rivers. American demolition expert Chris Matute says any one of these relics could maim or kill. He should know. A former Marine who did three tours of duty in Iraq, defusing roadside bombs and IEDs. Run the wire back to the control point. Matute is now helping the Vietnamese find and destroy ordnance from a war fought before he was born. Does it surprise you that a field can still be so deadly 35, 40 years after the fighting took place? No, not at all. Uh, that's one of the things that's not uh, understood by the general public. By some estimates, there are nearly a million tons of unexploded ordnance in Vietnam, contaminating up to 20% of the countryside, with one of the heaviest concentrations in Quang Tri province, the narrow strip of Vietnam that once separated the communist north from the U.S.-backed south. The DMZ, it was called, the demilitarized zone. It was hardly that. Some of the most intense and brutal ground fighting and aerial bombing of the war took place in this region. More than three decades on, bomb craters still pockmarked the countryside for miles on end. Today, Quang Tri is a front line once again for groups like Renew, a U.S.-funded project to train and deploy Vietnamese UXO teams with the latest safety equipment and technology including this high-tech tractor fitted with an oversized metal detector, computers, and GPS system. It can cover an area the size of 100 football fields in just a matter of days, mapping out precise grids where deadly ordnance might be found. Grid by grid, the search is then narrowed by teams with handheld detectors. Small flags mark each place a metal fragment is detected in this case, a lot of them. Then the most dangerous chore, slow, methodical probing by hand until each piece of metal is found and identified. <laughs> Former Vietnamese soldier Duong Duc Tam says he feels no fear when he's out here. He's confident that the training and equipment from his American friends will keep him safe. And whatever the risk, it's worth it. I feel like I'm in a battle to win back the land, he says, for the people who need it to live safely. Is this typical of what you find out here? This is very typical of what we find out here. Matute says this is just the sort of shell that could be set off by an accidental kick or simply by static electricity. Who knows what conditions are inside of that? I'm not going to chip away at that aluminum to find out you know, what condition the screws is. That's just silly. So we have to treat it as if it were sensitive. There is only one way to be certain this shell is out of commission for good. Blow it up, right where it was found. These search and destroy missions are just part of the battle here. The Renew project also includes an extensive educational campaign. Public awareness is a powerful weapon as well. In Quang Tri, we found graphic billboards posted along village roads, next to rice fields, next to schools. Yet even with the best education, the best trained demolition teams, and the best equipment, the curse of unexploded ordnance could be with Vietnam for generations to come. Several hundred devices each year are only discovered when they explode, plowed up by an unsuspecting farmer, picked up by scavengers looking for scrap metal to sell, or just stumbled upon by children playing in a riverbed. Lam Nguyen Viet had been taught the dangers, but a momentary lapse in judgment left him crippled for life and took the life of his best friend, Hao Vo. At Vo's home, a grieving family tells us the boys had often been warned to stay away from rusted metal in the fields. His mother is still asking, 
What more could we have done? This is Mark Litke reporting for World Focus in Quang Tri Province, Vietnam.